Do your New Year's resolutions include a healthier lifestyle? Well, we've got a special segment just for you on today's episode. And stay tuned for music by Sivasa Laupati, a devotional from Voice of Prophecy, a delicious healthy recipe, and much more. You don't want to miss it. And welcome to Wake Up With Hope. Happy Monday morning. We hope you had a fantastic weekend. That's right. You know, we are so excited to be with you here today. In fact, today is National Pie Day. Yummy. Uh -huh. I love pie. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Now, it's not the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet. We're talking okay. about the yummy kind of pie. So does that mean you're going to make me a pie? Mm, oh. That'd be a great idea because you've made some really good. I peach have. Pie. I have to admit that I have. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I want one of those <laughs> again. <laughs> no, though the holiday season is now behind us, I am sure many of us had our fair share of pie. <laughs> you know, what's one more slice, right? <laughs> yep. You know, the best thing about pie is that you can share it with someone else. That's true. Like you've shared with me when you made me that peach pie the one time. That we was had a good all pie these too. peaches and I came home from work and there yeah. was this amazing peach oh, yeah. pie. Whew, yeah. So yummy. It's been a while. I have to do it again. Yes. So we encourage you, friends. Hey, I'll do it today. Oh, great idea. It's National Pie Day. Yeah. <laughs> Spend some extra time today being intentional with your loved ones. Pick up a pie or make your favorite pie recipe together and soak in some of that extra bonding time with your friends or family. And later on today's program, we're going to have a delicious recipe to add to your cuisine. Also, we have a devotional thought from Voice of Prophecy, music, and a boost to keep you motivated as you tackle your New Year resolutions to live better. But first, let's take a look back at this day in history. On January 23, 1957, the Whammo Toy Company's machines rolled out the first batch of their aerodynamic plastic discs, now known to millions of fans worldwide as Frisbees. The story of the Frisbee began in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where William Frisbee opened the Frisbee Pie Company in 1871. Students from nearby universities would throw the empty pie tins to each other, yelling, Frisbee, as they let go. <laughs> Did you know that much like football and basketball, there is a game called Ultimate Frisbee? where they are teams and the score is kept. Hmm. <laughs> the interesting thing about Ultimate Frisbee, though, is that there are no referees. Interesting. Very. Mm -hmm. Instead, the players are expected to be honest about committing a foul. Though that's okay in a game, <laughs> I couldn't imagine life without a referee. Could you? <laughs> It'd be tough. You know, we could all agree that life isn't generally fair and people sometimes judge our intentions harshly. Yet we do have a sort of referee, mm -hmm. God in heaven. He sees it all. He knows our thoughts and our motives. And, and when it's all said and done, friends, he will be the ultimate judge who will judge all things as they ought to be. Mm -hmm. And so our appeal to you today is may we all be filled with hope, knowing we can trust him. Amen. How about nachos for lunch? Nacho salad to be exact. Oh. Gia and her clan, Moses and Olive, are with us this morning here to share a quick and versatile budget friendly nacho salad recipe. Salad. We are going to make a nacho salad, so not just the nachos that you melt cheese on top, it's a different type of nachos. And the reason why I thought it would be good for us to make one for you is because it looks amazing when you've got the spread. So look at this. So if you had people coming over for dinner or lunch and you wanted to make something light but very healthy and tasty, look how amazing these colours look and so healthy. If I had this on my table, my kids just pick at it, put it on their chips and they make their own and it makes it exciting because they get to eat vegetables and fresh salad, which they probably wouldn't have eaten otherwise. So. 
I also wanted to share with you how to use some of the recipes that we've made on the show. So one of the recipes we've made in the past is the mayonnaise. So it's the oil-free vegan mayonnaise. And we've also made a refried beans. And the refried beans you can freeze. And, and so you can use this, you can just get it out of the freezer. So say today, I didn't know what to cook. So can you put the chips in here? You can have one after you finish filling it up, okay? So say you were doing this at home for lunch or dinner. There you go, there's your chippies. That's plenty. So you can just get chips with um, corn chips with no preservatives in them. And what we'll do first is probably put the um, refried beans. So we'll put some refried beans on top of our nacho salad. Then we would add the salad that you want. So tomatoes, we can put some cucumber. Oh, this looks awesome already. Some lettuce. Hey, just a little bit of lettuce, some corn. Can you put some corn on top? Whoa. Yeah. And we love putting beetroot on it too. The red antioxidants, just throw colors in there. And on top of that, we're going to put our mayonnaise that we made. So instead of using sour cream, we use the mayo that we make ourselves, which has lots of protein in it and lots of good stuff. And I've made myself a nice guacamole with just some avocado. It's easy, it's simple. There you have it. It looks pretty messy there. And then we'll put some chives on top. Yeah, nacho salad. There you have it. So you've got a full meal. Really. Try our recipes at mumsatthetable.com and you'll find our mayo recipes there. I'm actually going to use some of these. This is just burrito mix or taco mix. Just put it on top for some extra flavour. We'll see you next time. Enjoy our healthy nacho salad. Say bye. 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 Look at them when you say bye. Bye. <laughs> well, we've made it into the new year, 2020. And many of us have made New Year resolutions to live an improved and better life. If this is you right now, we have a segment that is sure to keep you motivated on your path to a healthier life this new year. Dr. Peter Landless joins us now on today's episode of The Health Connection. Did you wake up with hope this morning? Do you feel energized and ready for the day? One of the ways to improve your feeling of wellness and being energized is to have regular exercise in your routine. In fact, regular exercise is regarded as one of, if not the single most important predictor of longevity. It also enhances every aspect of our quality of life, mentally, physically, emotionally and spiritually. So do you and I exercise regularly, at least 30 minutes each day? Even when it's divided into three 10-minute exercise sessions, it all counts. More is better, but any is good. Do the exercise that you enjoy. Walking, jogging, swimming, tennis, gardening, Movement of any kind is good. We've been designed for movement. But I hear you say, and I've said it too many times myself, but I'm too busy. I walk regularly in the cemetery. And that helps me realize that you can never be too busy to do the things that count. Think of the benefits, improved fitness and energy, clarity of thought, better weight control, prevention, and even reversal of type 2 diabetes, a decreased risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, a decreased risk of certain cancers, decreased risk of heart disease, better and healthier blood pressure, all of these being very positive in the enjoyment of healthy life. So what can you do today to either start an exercise program if you're not doing it or to reinforce and or improve your resolve to exercise? We all need to review how we are doing. Firstly, 
you have to make the decision. You have to make the choice to make the effort. And that takes significant willpower. Then, and this is key and crucial, schedule it into your daily routine. Strive for between 30 and 60 minutes a day. And as I said earlier, just make sure that you can even divide it into two or three periods through the day, but get it in. And then, start where you're comfortable. Importantly, get your doctor's advice if you've been inactive or have a health condition. And then, very much attention should be given to the importance of exercising with comfortable clothes and shoes that fit well. Otherwise, we get too hot, or we may be too cold, or painful feet may ensue. Join a class. Get an accountability partner, someone who will help you to stay on track and exercise regularly. And then, so important and of such superb help, ask for divine help to strengthen your resolve and your decision. I sometimes feel my resolve and my decisions are, as has been said, like ropes of sand. But it's God's will that we should have life and live it to the fullest. Enjoy every opportunity to move and exercise and at the same time to thrive. If you're enjoying today's show, share with a friend or visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more. And search for us on YouTube to check out our YouTube channel and keep up with us. Well, friends, we have to take a short break, but when we return, we'll have music from Sivasa Laupati. Welcome back, friends. Have you ever received a love letter? I have. <laughs> you know, there's something really special and heartwarming about receiving a love letter from someone special. And Jesus has left us a special love letter for you and me. Sivasa Laupati joins us now, shares a beautiful message, and sings the song, Love Letter. Between the light of day 
and the stars that dance around the moon at night. I love you as what he sings amongst the seas, and as his hands brush through the trees to make them sway. It's in his own special way. God shows you every day. Your eyes to see that all around you lies a piece of treasure from the heart of God that shows you every day He cares. I love you is written in the skies between the light of day and the stars that dance around the moon at night. What he sings amongst the seas As his hands brush through the trees To make them sway It's in his own special way God shows you every day In his own special way He shows us every day It's in his own special way God tells you every day, I love you. I love you. Thank you, Sivasa. Friends, don't go anywhere. When we return, our Voice of Prophecy friends will bring us hope from God's Word. Wake Up With Hope will be right back. We are so glad that you have chosen Wake Up With Hope to start your day. Welcome back, friends. And as promised, this morning we have our friends from Voice of Prophecy sharing this morning's devotional thought. If you're feeling burnout right now, you're not alone. Burnout is surprisingly common, and particularly in professions where we care for others. Medical professionals, chaplains, pastors, and teachers are all susceptible to burnout. And this isn't new. The prophet Elijah suffered from burnout many years ago, and God sent an angel to care for his physical needs. But that wasn't all the help that Elijah needed. Well, after an incredible display of God's power on Mount Carmel, Elijah was persecuted and chased by Queen Jezebel. And running for his life, he escaped. Exhausted and despondent, he felt alone in his calling. He told God that he alone stood on his side, on God's side, that he was the only true prophet left. That wasn't accurate. The prophets of Baal and Ahab and Jezebel, they did hold the reins of power and control in Israel. But God was still stronger. He still had His people. Elijah just couldn't see God's plan. His burnout prevented him from seeing God's bigger picture. But God wanted him to see it. He moved heaven and earth to speak to Elijah. Let's read about it in the book of 1 Kings and chapter 19. Then he, God, said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You know, God sent a great and strong wind past the cave. It was so powerful that it tore into the mountainside and dislodged pieces of rock. That description sounds like a hurricane force wind. And yet, God wasn't in the strong wind. Well, next, God sent an earthquake. The earth moved below Elijah's feet. He felt it shake and shudder. And still, God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earth settled, God sent another force of nature, 
a fire. Elijah would have smelled the smoke and heard and seen the flames leaping outside of the cave. But God wasn't in the fire. Now remember, Elijah is in the cave and he's feeling exhausted and despondent about his work and about the state of God's people, Israel. He feels alone. A windstorm, an earthquake, and a fire certainly caught his attention. But God needed Elijah to know and see and feel that he was with him. And in the next act, a still, small voice, Elijah heard God. And he felt God's presence in the quiet after the cacophony of nature. Now here's another answer for those of us who feel burned out. The answer isn't doing life bigger and louder and brighter. It's in the quiet and the stillness that God speaks to us, to our hearts. So how did Elijah respond? Well, let's keep reading in 1 Kings chapter 19. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle or cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now, When Elijah heard God's still small voice, he stepped out of the cave. He wrapped himself in his mantle. Elijah was ready to listen to God, to continue his journey with and for him. And God asked him a question, not because he didn't know the answer, but because he wanted to hear Elijah's answer. He said this, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life." So here, Elijah talks to God about his struggles, his challenges, and his feeling of aloneness. And hearing God's still small voice, well, it didn't instantly cure Elijah of his struggles, but it lifted him out of the cave. And God shared his plan for the rest of Elijah's ministry with him. He knew that Elijah's work was coming to a close. He'd been a good and faithful servant, and God still had a few important tasks for him to anoint new leaders in Syria and Israel, and to affirm the person who God called to be Elijah's successor. And the account continues in 1 Kings 19. Then the Lord said to him, Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu as king over Israel, and Elisha you shall anoint as prophet in your place." Well, what did Elijah do? Well, he left the cave and he continued on his journey just as God called him to. He finished the work and he found Elisha and he affirmed that he was the person God called to continue his work. You know, burnout isn't the end of our work or our calling to volunteer either, but it can be a signal that it's time for a change. Perhaps the solution is a slower pace with more time to care for our physical needs. Or God might be calling us to wrap up one area of service for Him and shift us into another, a new call and mission, or a step into retirement. You know, each of our situations are unique, but there is one common thread. In the busyness of life, it's difficult to see God's plan. His guiding hand can be hard to grasp in the midst of a raging windstorm, an earthquake, or a fierce firestorm. In all that noise, it's easier to retreat inside of the cave. But that's not where God needs us, and we won't know God's plan until we stop. Listen and hear his still small voice. Well, Hope Channel family, let's pray together this morning. Dear Lord, we are here this morning because we want to hear your voice and your plan for our lives. Father, the world feels so busy and noisy sometimes. It can feel like we're daily living at the center of a windstorm and bad news and sudden events seem to move the earth beneath us. Father, fires seem to rage all around us, literally and figuratively. 
And in the middle of all of this, we want to connect with you. We want to hear your voice, your plan. And so draw us close to you, quiet the distractions, and whisper your plan into our hearts today. We pray. Amen. Well, the journey of life isn't easy. And in spite of what the world tells us, the answer isn't in the hustle. It can be found in listening and hearing God's plan. Listen closely. His still small voice will show you a path out of burnout and back to Him. And then, well, it's up to you to step out of the cave when you hear it. We at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store for you, you can have hope in the midst of it. Amen. Thank you so much for that spiritual blessing. And friends, thank you so much for being with us today and watching Wake Up With Hope. If you'd like to learn more about our program or share with a friend, visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And please join us tomorrow morning. We will have an uplifting devotional message from Elizabeth Talbot from Jesus 101. The Let's Pray team will be with us for a prayer session and we will have music by Mary Lou Inks. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more about the Bible, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. And before we go, we'd like to share with you an encouraging Bible promise. And today's Bible promise is found in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. It says, Have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you, truly, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. You know, friends, Jesus has promised that when we put our faith and trust in Him without doubting, He will perform mighty miracles for us. Whatever you're facing today, remember, there is nothing impossible for God. And He has promised that He can and you can trust in Him. That's right. That's a promise, friends. And we wish you all the best for this new week. May God bless you and may your day be filled with hope and thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, today, Lord, today we choose to exercise our faith. You have given each one of us the ability to do so. And so we make a choice. We want to have faith in you today. And so we pray, Father, that as we walk with you today, that your promises will be fulfilled in our life. We thank you, Lord, because this gives us great hope. In Jesus' name, amen.